So let's write a method to compare strings. We're just going to start this. We'll finish this tomorrow. Public static void string example. Uh, we want to compare two words, but we want the user to import those, input those wor words using the keyboard in the terminal. So that means we need a scanner. And I'll create a new scanner object associated with system.in so we can read from the terminal. And we'll prompt the user just like we did in the last unit. Enter two words. And string one, we will assign it the reference to the new string returned by the next method on the scanner. And str2 will assign to that a reference to the new string returned by calling the next method again. And the question we'll ask are all, are these two strings equal? So if str1 is equal to str2, we will print strings are equal. Otherwise, we will print strings are not equal. So type this, compile this, run this, try a bunch of different strings. Try words that are equal, try words that are not equal, see how it goes have in terms of what the equality operator really means when we're dealing with class types instead of primitive types. So the equality operator, again the two equal signs, it returns true if the two variables, in this case string 1 and string 2, the two variables contain the same value. And again, think of the value as the, as the number written on the post-it note. Okay. For variables of a class type, which remember, including strings, this means they contain the same reference. The question is really, do these two variables refer to the same object? That is, they refer to the same object in memory. And that's a very different question. It is not that two strings have the same sequence of characters. To be clear, asking if two variables refer to the same objects in memory, or, or, ch or asking a question about the reference stored in the variable can be a very useful question. And in fact, we'll use it, we'll ask that question later today. But if our intent is to see if two strings have the same sequence of characters, the equality operator is, is not what we're looking for. And so to ask the question, do two strings have the same sequence of characters, um, we need to use a method on the string class. And this method is on your quick reference sheet. So continue to refer to that quick reference sheet. The method we're going to use is the equals method. So the equals method returns true if the two objects referenced by the variables are quote unquote equal. And I put equal in quotes because what equal means, um, what equal, what equals means is defined by the class. So it is up to the class to define the equals method. Um, so the string class defines the equals method. That is also on your quick reference sheet. Um, other classes define the equals method. We could define the equals method for like our vending machine class. 
Um, but then we would have to decide what does it mean for two vending machines to be equal. Um, or there could be an equals method for the turtle class. What does it mean for two turtles to be equal? Um, so it's up to the class to define what equality means for objects of that class. Um, next semester, we will see that there's a little bit more to this equals thing than we're like, going to dive into right now. Um, implementing equals in an appropriate way for our classes is beyond the scope of this class. Um, it's something we do in software engineering, um, but it's a little much for, for in here. Um, so what does equals mean for strings? Well, for strings, it means that the two objects have the same sequence of characters, which is what we would expect. And so the syntax for this is if str1 equals str2. And I'm going to actually copy these messages from up above and paste them here. The equals method um, is a method on the string class. So we need to call it on a variable that refers to a string. So on, we call it on one string variable, and we pass the second variable as an argument. So string one dot equals string two. Doesn't matter which meth which variable we call it on, which one we pass as an argument, because um, either they're going to be equal or not. Now before we get too far, we should really revise what we're printing up here in response to the question, do these two variables refer to the same object? So rather than saying strings are equal, which is not the case, really that would be that the string references are equal or that the string references are not equal? That's really the question we're asking. So go ahead and compile and run this again. Type in two words that are the same. Type in two words that are different. Make sure that it behaves as, as we would now expect. I'll do the same. String example. If I type in two different words, the references are not equal, the strings are not equal as expected. If I type in the same word twice, the references are still not equal as is expected now that we understand that. But the strings are equal in that they have the same sequence of characters. So that's a good sign. So now we've looked at equality from the perspective of integer values, double values, and strings. And really what we've done here is strings can apply to objects of any class type, um, assuming that class defines the equals method. What I want to take a look at next, in terms of our operators, is we can certainly use these relational operators. By that, I mean less than, greater than, um, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. We can use those with, in, with primitive types. We can use those with integers. We can use those with doubles. And they, they behave as expected. We cannot use them with strings. We can't ask, hey, is this string less than the other string using the less than operator? Instead, we need to actually use a method. Um, and before we introduce that method, I want to focus on how, how are strings ordered? What does it mean for one string to be less than or greater than another string? The way that we order characters um, is pretty much alphabetically. Okay, So start with that. Think about like the lowercase letter A comes before is less than the lowercase letter B. The capital letter A is less than, that is, it comes before the capital letter B. 
It's not just letters. It can also be digits. The digit 0 as a character is less than the digit 1. Okay. That's all like alphabetical order, which you know and love, and we're familiar with that. The only twist is, is that technically in Java, characters are ordered lexicographically. Um, and the only really twist there has to come in with capital letters versus lowercase letters. All capital letters are less than, that is, they come before all lowercase letters. So capital letter B is less than a lowercase letter A. If you just keep that like one exception in mind, your intuition for alphabetical ordering is going to serve you just, just fine. Technically what's going on here is that characters are, are ordered by their Unicode value and all capital letters have a less of a Unicode value um, than lowercase letters. That's why we have this behavior. It's just based on the Unicode value. So this is what it means to ask, is one character less than another? And when we compare strings, we simply compare one character at a time um, until either we run out of characters, um, in which case that string comes first, um, or one character is less than another. So let's take a look at what it looks like to compare strings and see which one comes first or second. This is going to be our second new method um, on the string class we will determine which string comes first lexographically thought I had that in here somewhere we will determine which string comes first lexographically I keep copying and pasting it I find that hard to spell um, using the compare to method of the string class This is, the, this is actually the last string method on your quick reference sheet um, that, that we're learning. Um, you will have seen them all at this point. That said, we will learn next semester there's a little bit more behind the compare to method than is immediately apparent. Um, so we'll pick that up again next semester is, as well. But the way the compare to method works um, is that it returns an integer value. So compare to returns an int. And here are the different possibilities. Compare to may return 0. And compare to returns 0 if the strings are equal. That is, they have the same sequence of characters. So instead of invoking equals, you could invoke compare to and just check if compare to returns 0. Compare to can also return a negative number, that is a number less than zero, if string one is less than string two, that is it comes before string two lexicographically. And it can return a positive integer if string one is greater than string two lexicographically, that is string one comes after string two. And here's what the syntax looks like. We can create a local variable of type int called result and assign it the value from calling the compare to method on the string referenced by str1. And we can pass a reference to the string uh, referenced by str2. For me personally, um, I get a little confused when trying to figure out what the compare to method is going to return or what it means. So here's a little trick that I use that helps me out that you may find useful um, as well. If compare to returns zero, I'm OK. I'm like, OK, the strings are equal. I can, I can deal with that. Um, but if compare to returns a negative integer, sometimes I struggle with like, what does that mean? Um, and just to kind of illustrate this, what, the, what I do is I look at the compare to part and then I either writing on a sheet of paper or just making a note, whatever, I replace compare to with the less than symbol. So if compare to returns a number less than zero, that means string one 
is less than string two. That is string one comes before string two and that helps me out in my head, I don't know. Similarly, if compare two returns a number greater than zero, I'll replace compare two either in my head or actually write it out um, with a greater than symbol so that when I read it, I say string one is greater than string two. That is string one comes after string two. And just replacing the method name compare to with a less than or greater than symbol based on whether it returns a value less than or greater than zero just helps me keep it straight in my head. Oh, good question. Um, technically, the value that's returned is not defined. You can't count on it to be any particular value. In reality, what is often done is a subtraction of those Unicode um, values. And so it's, it's actually how, f wherever the comparison stopped, it's how far apart are those two characters in terms of their Unicode values. But technically, we can't rely upon any particular implementation of compare to. Yeah. So related to that, always check if it's less than or greater than zero. Do not check like, hey, is it equal to one or is it equal to negative one? That might not be the case. So. All right, now that we have this, let's actually write some if else if statements to do something useful with it. So we could actually compare result. We could say if result is less than zero, let's keep track of which string comes first. So first string will equal string one. So if compare two returns a value less than zero, that means string one is less than string two, so string one comes first. Else if the result is greater than zero, then the first string will be string two. Because if compare two returns a value greater than zero, that means string one is greater than string two, string two comes first. And then we can just print out a little message related to this. We can say system.out.println, the first string is, and concatenate first str, and let's also print the length of it. We can say the, um, let's say its length is, and we'll concatenate the length of the first string. Cool. This code doesn't compile. So I'm getting a compiler error that says cannot find symbol variable first str. However, I've certainly declared first str right here as type string. And what I've done here is something that uh, is a very common mistake that students make as we start writing more and more if else statements and as we start writing more and more loops where we have other code blocks. The reason why we're getting this error is that this variable first str here, it's being declared and therefore its scope is limited to this set of curly brackets. A variable is declared when we first use it and we specify its type. Its scope, that is where it actually exists, is defined by the next outermost set of curly brackets. So the variable first str, this first str, doesn't exist beyond here. And this variable first str, which is being declared here, it doesn't exist beyond here, which is why the symbol cannot be found outside of the scope. So this is a really common mistake I see, and the way we need to fix it is if we want to use a variable both inside of an if or an else if or an else statement, as well as outside, we need to declare it outside before the statements. So we need to declare first str here, and then we can use it inside of both the if and the else if, and we can use it out here. 
So as we start writing more complicated code with these conditionals, these decisions and looping structures, um, we need to be more conscious and careful about what is the scope of our local variables. So that's a, a common mistake I've seen to, to watch out for. This still doesn't compile. Okay? This is another common mistake that um, I see students run into as we get started with conditions. It says the variable first string might not have been initialized. So if the result is less than zero, the variable gets initialized. And if the result is greater than zero, the variable gets initialized. But if the result is zero, first string never gets initialized, and that's not allowed. It won't compile. So we should at least initialize it to a default value of null, meaning the variable doesn't refer to a string yet. Okay? A value of null for a variable of a class type means it's not referencing any object. There's no object at this point. Now it's going to compile which is great. So let's run it. Now that we got it compiling, let's run it. String example, and I'm going to type in apple and banana again. And we're told that the first string is apple. Excellent. Its length is five characters, as we expect. Let's type in the same word twice, apple and apple. Okay. Ooh, our code crashed. We got a null pointer exception. Okay. Um, and if I click on the link right here, it takes me and highlights the line of code where the crash occurred. A null pointer exception is generated when we attempt to call a method on a variable or reference an instance variable on a variable, um, and the value of that variable is null. That variable isn't actually referencing an object. So therefore, we can't access the instance variable. We can't call the method because there is no object. And so whenever you get a null pointer exception, look at the line of code that's specified and check all the variables on which you're calling methods and see which one might be null. And here we have two variables on this line of code. The first variable is out, is part of system.out. Um, could it be null? Well, unlikely because the previous line of code worked fine and we called the println method on out there. The second variable is first str that we're calling the length method on. It's certainly possible that first str has a value of null um, because the strings could be, could be equal. So let's actually be a little bit more careful. Let's only print these two messages if first str is not equal to no. Otherwise, let's just print a nice message saying strings are equal. Now this will compile and it won't crash when we run it if the strings are, are equal. And I wanted to do this because I wanted to uh, review this idea of a null pointer exception because it comes up a lot. Um, but I also wanted to show you the inequality comparison we're doing right here. When we say first str is not equal to null, we, we're using the inequality operator. We are actually asking about the value of the variable. We are focused on the reference. We're saying if the variable first str has a value that is not null, that is, if it refers to a valid object, then we're going to print this stuff out. Otherwise, we're going to say the strings are, are equal. So it is appropriate to use the equality and inequality operators with variables of class types. We just have to be more careful with the questions we're, we're asking. 